The toe bone is connected to the heel bone. The heel bone is connected to the foot bone. The foot bone is connected to the leg bone. The leg, oh, you know what I'm talking about. Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. Welcome to my YouTube guitar building channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And I hope that by the end of this video, you'll decide to click that subscribe button down below. It's free and every subscription I get helps the algorithm suggest my videos and that makes this channel uh, more successful. So uh, in today's video, uh, I'm gonna be covering part nine of my Delta guitar build. And the Delta guitar is the guitar you see right here which is a guitar where I'm combining the features that I like from a headless guitar with the features that I like from a traditional guitar that has a headstock. So I'm kind of calling it the headless headstock guitar build, although the, the model is the Delta model. And what I'm gonna be doing specifically is I'm going to be installing the neck into the body and I'm going to be attaching the string retainers to the headstock and then I'll be installing the solo bridges, the, 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 the tuner bridges to the body. So uh, yeah, let's jump in and get started. Before I could install the neck into the body, I had to drill the holes to route the wiring from the pickups to the control cavity. And to do that, I'm using really long brad point drill bits. And as you can see, I also use a small length of aluminum pipe to drill the hole from the bridge pickup cavity into the control cavity without damaging the edges of the wood. After the polymerized tongue oil had fully cured on both the body and the neck, it was time to bring those two parts together. Now, logic would dictate that it, since I have a CNC machine, I could drill the holes into the heel of the neck using my CNC machine during the process of carving the neck. However, I have found that the process of final sanding and shaping of the neck can actually change ever so slightly the position of the neck relative to the center line of the body. So I think it's better to uh, wait to drill those holes until later. And what I did was I pressed the neck into the pocket and then made sure that the neck was lined up perfectly with the center line of the body, and then followed that by marking the position of the neck mounting holes so that I could drill those on my drill press. Normally when you install a neck into a guitar body with wood screws, you're probably gonna use a number eight screw. However, I prefer to use a much larger, more robust number 14 screw. It just uh, holds the neck in much more securely. And I'm not using a neck plate for the screws. Instead, I'm using uh, screw ferrules. And what the, the screw ferrule I prefer to use is a billet aluminum countersunk washer. They work really well. They're available in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and, and anodized colors. So you can find ones that will work specifically for what you're trying to achieve. After installing the neck into the body, it was time to install the string retainers on the headstock. And to do that, I printed out a full-size, full-scale copy of my headstock showing where those retainers would be installed. And then I marked the position of them using a center punch. Each retainer has two holes, one for a little peg that positions the retainer and then another one for the wood screw that's gonna hold the retainer in place.
Now here's a tip for preventing those tiny little screws from breaking as you install them. Scrape the threads against a bar of soap, a candle, or pack the threads with some paste furniture wax. That will lubricate the threads and make it a lot easier to install them without worrying about snapping off those tiny little heads. When I applied the botanical polymerized tongue oil to the guitar neck, I applied it to the entire neck, including the frets, knowing that I'd have to remove it later on, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm using a piece of triple lot synthetic steel wool to wipe off that excess dried polymerized tongue oil from the frets, and I'm also smoothing out the finish between the frets. And then to clean off the residue, I used a clean cloth dampened with some mineral spirits. One of the challenges of installing individual solo type guitar bridges is that each bridge needs to be grounded in order for the strings to be grounded. So I have to figure out a way to do that. And what I came up with was to simply run a strip of copper foil tape on the top of the guitar body underneath where those bridges will be installed. That copper foil tape is then connected by a ground wire uh, which runs into the control cavity and is soldered to the ground lug on the jack. So when the bridges are installed, they're all in contact with that copper foil and that thereby grounds all of the bridges and all of the strings. One thing you'll notice if you look closely is that the, the bridges themselves are being mounted into shallow recessed slots. And the reason for that is because these bridges sit up fairly tall and I didn't want to angle the neck to bring the string action down I wanted to try to keep the neck flat, but to, to install it as deep into the body as I could. And that meant I had to recess the bridge down into the body. And that worked really well. Uh, what I had to do though, is I had to carefully measure and determine the depth of that recess in order to allow me maximum adjustability for each of the saddles so that I can achieve the precise string action that I need for each individual string. Well guys, that's all the time I've got for this episode, and I could have actually continued on with installing more components. However, the next parts that I need to install are gonna be the pickups. And as you know, I make all my own pickups. So I wanna devote an entire episode to that, and that's gonna be episode 10, which will be the next episode. And I'm gonna be using my CNC pickup winder to make those pickups. And I'm hoping that in that episode, I'm going to have a special announcement about my CNC pickup winder, because I know a lot of you have been waiting for uh, the plans that I was going to offer to make the uh, winder. So uh, be sure to check that out when it's posted up uh, next week. But in the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, click the thumbs up button, and I'll see you soon.